Here's a pizza. And here's another kind of pizza, a pizza ladier niçoise. We're doing pizza variations without soggy bottoms. Today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to The French Chef. I'm Julia Child. Look at these, look at these pizzas. And what's the great thing about them is that they're not soggy. They've, they've got a crusty bottom like bread. And to make great, great pizzas like this, all you need is some tiles or fire bricks and a cedar shingle or the old bottom of a drawer. And then you can make the perfect pizza. Well, these, uh, a pizza oven, if, if you went to a pizza pizzeria, the, the ovens have a fire brick or tile floor. And the, the pizza bakes directly on that. And you can duplicate this same effect by using quarry tiles like this. That's spelled Q-U-A-R-R-Y. And these are six inches long and three inches wide and about a quarter of an inch thick. And you can buy them anywhere. They're very inexpensive. You just look up in the telephone book under tiles and ask them for quarry tiles. And they're usually red, and they're hard, and they're high-fired. And they just work beautifully. Or you can get fire bricks. These are called, these are half-size bricks, or fire brick splits. And they work very nicely, too. They're, they're a little bit heavy. But the important thing is that they heat up and that they spread the heat. And I'm going to show you how they work. Now, just pretend that this is the inside of your oven here, and this is your oven rack. And you've got enough tiles or fire bricks to cover it completely like this. And then you put the rack in the oven, and you heat it up red hot, up to 400, not red hot, up to 450 degrees. And that's just as hot as tofit in there. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour I think for the bricks or the tiles to get hot enough. And then you have your a cedar shingle or a drawer bottom or some woody type of thing. And we'll just pretend that this is, this is the raw pizza dough that you have formed upon this board. And then pretend that this is the oven. And you've got your raw dough and you stick it right in the oven like that, and you go whoosh. And there, it bakes right nakedly on those fire bricks. And you can have two levels in the oven. You can have one level in the upper third and one in the lower third of the oven, and, and, four, and bake two pizzas at once. And the reason it is, it's so good and it makes such a better pizza is because you've got these, this hot surface that prevents that soggy bottom syndrome. Now you can make you can make pizzas either out of out of pie crust dough or out of bread dough, but I think it's more fun to make them out of bread dough because that's more like a pizza palace. But you have the difference in between bread dough, although it's much the same mixture, and pizza dough in that bread dough is formed into a loaf while the pizza dough has to be formed into a round thing like this, so that you have to have a dough that you can handle properly, so that it will work the way you would like. And I've made up a mixture that I find works very nicely. I've tried all kinds. I've even tried um, frozen dough, which also works. But I like making my own mixture, so I'm going to give you the proportions for it. We have. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And if you can get unbleached flour, that's better. Two and a half cups. And then mixed with one and a quarter cups of unbleached pastry flour. And that's not cake flour. It doesn't come in a box. It comes in a sack. So that makes a total amount of flour of three and three quarter cups. And if you can't get the unbleached flour, 
you can use regular all-purpose. It's just a little harder to work with. So I have three and a half cups of flour in here. And then I want two and a quarter teaspoons of salt. That goes in. And one and a quarter cups of tepid water. And one package of either fresh or dry active yeast dissolved in one third cup of water. And you can mix it by hand if you want to. But we've done it by hand so much, I'm going to mix it by machine. And if you have a heavy duty machine like this, this type, with a dough hook, you find that it works awfully well. And it's particularly good if you're going to say double the, double the recipe or going to make a whole lot of pizzas. And what I find it particularly, particularly useful is that you can do the initial part of the mixing first. And this does have a, this does have a, a splatter shield that you can put on, and it's supposed to be a rather moist dough, and I'm going to put in a little tiny bit of water, more water. You find sometimes that one and a quarter cups is enough, plus the one third cup that the yeast went in and you mix it until it masses on the, makes a mass. As you can see there, it has all massed up. And then as soon as it is massed, you put in three tablespoons of olive oil, and this tenderizes the dough and also gives it a nice taste. If you were doing this by hand after the dough had massed up, then you would just start kneading in the oil by bits. So you let it go until the, and the oil does absorb, and then you take it out, and then you finish the kneading by hand, which you usually have to do because sometimes it hasn't absorbed all the oil, and you want to make sure that the lumps are out of it. And this has to be a soft dough, but you see you can, as you remember, we've done it by hand before, and it takes a little while until you can get it up to this consistency so that you can rise, lift it up and slap it. And you've got to be rough with dough. But you notice again, this is a fairly soft dough, and what you're trying to do is to get the, all the gluten molecules in the flour to join happily together so that you'll have the dough elastic. And this amount of dough will make two pizzas about 14 to 16 inches across. And then after you, after you have kneaded it, you put it into a clean bowl and let it rise to triple. And then you take it out and deflate it, put it back into a bowl, and let it again rise to triple. And here you are. That's that same dough that is risen to triple. And as usual, you must let it ro rise slowly. I'm going to cut that in half. And this is, um, is going to make a 14 ounce, 14 inch pizza. And you want to Take it and, because you're going to make a round thing, you want to fold the edges up to make a round shape and then do it like this, just as though you're making a round loaf of bread. And then roll it out a little bit. And as you will find, that it's going to take you about 10 minutes to get the rolling done, because you roll it as far as it will, because it's resistance, and then you take a piece of floured plastic and you let it settle for a while, for about two or three minutes, and then you roll it again. And I have some here that is rolled out fairly well, but you see how eventually, after about every two or three minutes, you roll it a little bit more, it finally gets out to be just about the right length. Here, I'll go back again to this. I know this hasn't rolled enough, but this is your idea. Every time you go back in about two minutes, it will roll out a little bit farther. And I think the reason this is we're householders and not really 
we don't really live in a pizza palace so that we can't get the kind of flour that you would be able to if you were running a pizza palace. But then after about 10 minutes, you keep rolling it till it gets out as far as you would like it to. And then it's going to be formed on a board. And here's a, there's a drawer top and there's just a plain board. I'll form this on the drawer top. And then you've got cornmeal and you sprinkle it liberally on so that the dough is not going to stick to it. And if you don't get enough on, you're going to have an awful time getting the dough off. So be sure that you use plenty. And then you have your pizza topping, which can be anything that you like, like tomatoes and mushrooms. And I think as long as you're going to be going to be make it fresh, you should use fresh ingredients as much as possible. And now roll the dough up on your pin like that, and then unroll it with the edge just as close to the edge of your board as possible, and then straighten it out a bit. And then this is going to be tomato, cheese, and mushrooms. So I have some fresh, a bit, I'm going to use a bit of combination of fresh and a fresh and unfresh. These, this is just freshly diced tomato pulp. I had a lesson from a Sicilian pizza, pizza man in Nice when he made awfully good pizzas. And he, he said he never do, used a real tomato sauce. He used, it, he used a mixture out of season. And these are some Italian plum tomatoes because they have a good taste. And then I'm going to put in some mushrooms and a little olive oil in them because that will that will give them a little more taste. And those just go on helter skelter. And I'm going to put on some a few capers, some of these giant capers, the kind that they get in Nice. And then some cheese. And this is diced cheese. This is cheese is diced half an inch in half inch pieces. And it's a mixture of mozzarella, cheddar, and Swiss. My, I'm going to put a little tiny bit more tomato there to fill it up. And then a bit of oregano and some olive oil at the end. There's just about, oh, maybe a teaspoon of oregano. And then drizzle on a little bit of olive oil. And that's ready for the oven, and you don't want to wait. The oven is at 450 degrees, and it going on to those hot tiles. And er, er, that messed up a little tiny bit, but that sometimes happened. I didn't have the courage of my convictions. Like that uh, will bake about. 12 to 15 minutes, but when you put it in, you should put it in and go little tiny jerks and pong like that, and it'll come off. Now, we have a very nice variation of this, which is called the pisaladière niçoise, and it's an onion tart, and a very nice one, I think. And here's a great big bowl of onions, and some cheese, and and anchovies. And then we have, I'm going to see now whether this original piece of dough is going to roll out. And I've, luckily I have, I have a spare in case it doesn't. I'm going to go back and get my better pin. I enjoy using this plastic pin, but sometimes it sticks a little bit. That's rolling pretty well. You have to keep flowering, and a lot of the pizza directions they say that you can pull and stretch it, and I don't find that works very well. I, I prefer this method much, much the best. Now I think that's ready to go. I'm going to first put on the cornmeal.
And then on goes the dough, rolling it up on the pin. I'm sure if you were on a real pizza palace, this would all go much faster and smoother because you would have developed great systems. And then the onions go on. This is rolled out about, we'll try and get it, the thinner the better, under, under a quarter of an inch if you can. And these are just onions that have been cooked very slowly in the oven, in a 350 oven, just with olive oil. And the nice thing about it is you cook a big batch of them and you can freeze them and then make pie saladiers anytime you want. And then on we have some anchovies. If you had those fresh anchovies from Nice, that would be very nice. And this seems to be a speciality of Nice, the pie saladier, but it's just so good. And it's also good if you don't if you don't want to make the make the bread dough, even a ready mixed pie dough can be used, and you can do it just exactly like this. I'm gonna put on a few little olives. These are just canned sliced olives. In Nice they use whole olive, olives, but if people don't realize that, they can break their tooth on an olive pit. And here is some a mixture of Parmesan and Swiss cheese, and a little bit of, again, a little bit of oregano. Some people don't put on anything, and again, a little bit of olive oil. Or you could use the oil from your anchovy can. So that is all there is to the to the pizza la dire niçoise. It's very much like a, like a pizza, just it's a purely onion flavor. So this is to go immediately into the oven, and while they're cooking, I'd like you to see an outdoor pizza palace in Nice. It's in a great big open market, and take a look at it. There, right next to that blue awning is our pizza palace. And what's wonderful, when you market in these, in the early morning, you can have pizzas and pizzaladiers for breakfast. Well, those were the outdoor pizzas, and here is our indoor version. There's the pizza la dière, and here's the pizza. And it's such fun, I think, to be able to serve them like this. Well, those look nice, and the great thing about them is that the bottom is nice and crusty. Now, in the Nice market, we also ran into another specialité niçoise, which I've never seen before, called a socca, S-O-C-C-A. It's an enormous pancake that's made out of chickpea flour. And here's some chickpea flour. And in Nice, the socca is sold in the great open market right at the pizza stand. And there it is. For ages and ages, this has been the delivery system, always by bicycle, and about every half hour, a fresh batch comes in. The soccer is a kind of a, 
of a rather wet crepe. It tastes salty and olive oily and, and wheaty or chickpea. It's such, it was such an interesting thing to see how people ate it and also how it was made. We just had never seen anything like this before. I think it's only in Nice where it's made. Some people like salt on it. The bakery is only five minutes away up in the old town. C'est l'huile d'olive ou? L'huile d'olive ou d'arachide, suivant les goûts. Oui. Bien étalé l'huile au fond oui. de la plaque. Olive oil smeared all over it. Prendre la farine de pois chiche. On va la l'étaler dans le plateau. Oui. C'est très liquide. Très very, liquide. very liquid. That surprises me. On va remettre de l'huile par-dessus. Relever un peu d'huile. Il y en a beaucoup, beaucoup d'huile. Beaucoup d'huile. Oui. À peu près un quart de litre un par plat. That's about a whole cup of oil. Bien délayé. Bien délayé. Mix it all up. Et ensuite on fourne. On va en fourner. Oh. C'est assez simple à faire. Voilà. It's not too difficult. If you have all the equipment. On va enfourner. Voilà. Enfourner. Ici. Ici. Avec la chatouille. Et ce qui est très important, c'est qu'on a beaucoup de flamme. You have to have a very pour hot pour oven with flames coming over. That will... La flamme lèche les, les briques. Pour que ça flames have to lick the bricks. Ça prend combien de minutes? Une dizaine de minutes pour cuire une plaque. Mm, about, about 10 minutes of cooking. Ça commence à chauffer, on voit. Oui. Ça commence? Oui, ça commence. It's done. That took about 10 minutes. Let's go. Voilà. Oh, allons le voir de près. Vous voyez, c'est comme une oh crème oui. de crêpe. Ah oh oui, oui. Oui, c'est bien... Très doré. Bien coloré, nicely bien doré. colored. Oui. At one o'clock, all the market people are out, and the whole place is swept clean and washed, and it becomes a parking place. And this goes on every day of the week. And there are pizzas and pizzaladiers there. And we're going to do a soccer now, because you can do it in the same way as, no, not in the same way exactly, but because we have our hot bricks. We can do it. So you've got, this is a 12 inch pan and it's a no stick one and there's some olive oil in. And then we have the chickpea flour. And this you can get at um, health food, nature and organic type stores and sometimes in Italian markets. And it smells and tastes just like chickpeas. And I have three quarters of a cup in there. And I'm gonna put in one cup of water and then we have about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then that all gets shaken up. So I can get the cover on. There. Well, that doesn't seem to do very nicely. Well, didn't take time to get the cover on. Well, anyway, it gets strained in. I'll make that look a little nicer, if possible. And you just want enough so that the pan is covered. And as you noticed, his mixture was very liquid. And then you want to put a bit of olive oil on top, 
His pan, of course, was much bigger, so I'll put in about a tablespoon and a half. And the olive oil gives it a, gives it a flavor and then also makes it brown nicely. So that's all there is to that mix. All you need to do is to get the, get the chickpea flour. Now you remember that oven that he has when you saw the film. His oven had the hot tiles or the hot fire brick floor. And then it also had the flames which licked over. And you can do the same kind of thing by having your hot tiles. And you put it in the oven. Wait a minute, I have one in here actually. So I want you to see how it goes. You put it in the oven and then for in about three or four minutes, the top is all, it's set and the top has begun to puff up like that. And then to get the flames licking the floor, you use the broiler. And you put it in the broiler for two or three minutes until it's nice and brown. So there you are. And this is burned typically a little bit on, on one side, just the way his had. There, I'm going to put this other one in so it can go. But it's a, it's a really, it's, I think it's a very nice dish. And it's certainly very simple to do, and I'm going to show you how to serve it indoors. Uh-oh, that almost fell off. There. Now, here is, there's your pizza, and there's your pizza ladiere. And with, with any of this, I'd serve a nice wine, like a good Beaujolais, or a good red Chianti, or a mountain red. And then, here's how you serve your soccer. Take a I'm using a plastic thing and just cutting it off. And this is, you know, this is you can use, uh, serve it on a napkin, and it's rather nice at a cocktail party. And it has, well, it's, it, it, it has its own special flavor. I don't think it's sort of one of the great gourmet things of all time, but it has, there's something rather nice about it. And so all of this, all of these things are possible because of these hot tiles. And if you haven't got time to make a pizza or a pizza ladiere, you can always serve soccer to them. And that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is co-author of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2.